Hello everyone, my name is Carlo Turo and welcome to my assignment number four for the PIDP 3240 class. Today for my online presentation I would like to be giving you a brief overview of the changes to the 2015 Canadian Electrical Code. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with uh, the electrical industry, this book right here, the Canadian Electrical Code, is what we call our Bible. And uh, this tells us what we can and can't do in the electrical industry. So I'll give you a brief overview. The 2015 Canadian Electrical Code um, has finally become adopted in the province of British Columbia. The minister signed the document, this document right here, M392, on December the 2nd of 2015. So we now have a 90-day uh, grace period or transition period where the uh, Canadian Electrical Code 2015 edition will be wrapping up and uh, getting into full use on February 29th of 2016. So what I'll be doing today is giving you a brief overview of the changes right here. And um, we won't be getting into the section 10, 12, and 86 changes or the applicable tables. There's a lot to learn or uh, discuss right here in the overview of changes. So as I said in my uh, earlier uh, presentation or earlier slide, that the code will be adopted on February 29th, 2016. That is not a typo error. In 2016, it, we do happen to have a leap year, or that's a leap day. So uh, that is Monday, February the 29th. So now let's get into the changes uh, for the 2015 Canadian Electrical Code. Right here in Section 2, the general rule. Now, uh, general rule, believe it or not, uh, this section actually pertains to any section in the code. Just for a brief uh, overview for you. The big change here is the circuit breaker markings and application right here. Um, circuit breakers have to be marked with a slash rating. So uh, if you're going to be using a circuit breaker on a 120 slash 240, 347, 600 volt service, the breaker must be marked 120 slash 240 or 347 slash 600. If you're using a circuit breaker on a Delta system, which is an ungrounded system, they must be marked 240, 480, or 600 volts. So you must see the phase-to-phase -phase characteristics on that circuit breaker. Big changes right here in uh, Section 4. We have some revised ampacities for Table 1 through 4. Be careful on that. Right here, table D8A and D11B. Nothing really has changed there, but I got to give kudos to the uh, the Section 4 committee here. Uh, for those of you that are installing conductors 1 aught or larger underground, in the olden days, you would have to go to Appendix B to look for the uh, um, cable or conduit configuration. And then you would have to go to the appendix D to find your ampacities. Uh, there was a lot of confusion there. A lot of people uh, didn't know that, that these rules existed. Now all you have to do is go to uh, appendix D8A and D11B. Look for your um, cable configuration. Flip the page. Look for your ampacities. Done. It's uh, really streamlined. Uh, big change right here for the temperature terminating rating rule that came out in the last edition. Now what we've done is harmonized with the Americans. Um, we've kind of gone a little backward, but we've harmonized. So if you have a piece of electrical equipment that's rated for less than 100 amps, you must default to the opacities of table one through four 
in the 60 degree opacity column. Big changes there. Uh, and of course, if it's above 100 amps, then you can use the 75 degree rating opacity column. Right here, great kudos to section four right here. We finally have ampacities for high voltage cables. So for those of you that are installing high voltage cables underground and you want to know the ampacities, use the D17 series. Big change right here in section six, the 320 amp meter base is now available. So for those installations that um, are using high demand for loads, such as uh, vehicle car chargers, um, single family dwellings with multiple suites, and uh, of course you don't want to uh, install a 400 amp service, well guess what, you can get away with a 320 amp meter base right here. Um, however, use some extreme caution on this. The local utility has not been able to provide a uh, smart meter based on the 320 amp uh, um, service. Big changes right here in section eight. Uh, rule 8200, which deals with residential, and 8202 that deals with uh, multifamily commercial uh, townhouses. 8202 was silent when it came to um, uh, calculating the demand factors for um, uh, on-demand hot water heaters, saunas, um, steamers, hot water steamers or hot tubs. Uh, that was all taken at 25%. Now in the new code, they've made some clarifications right here. Uh, when it, so when it comes to multifamily residencies, um, hot water, on-demand heaters, etc., are now taken at 100%. Big change right here in section 10, grounding and bonding. The big change is, of course, you know that you have to install uh, your grounding conductor is copper. That is the number one choice, um, but you can use aluminum. There are restrictions, so be very careful. You are not allowed to bury aluminum grounding conductor underground. Of course, it has to do with the moisture and uh, the corrosiveness. So you can use aluminum grounding conductor, but it must be above ground, uh, no moisture conditions. So uh, as you can see, I am running close out of time. Um, I hope you enjoy this presentation on the changes to the 2015 Canadian Electrical Code. Thank you. Goodbye.